Hi, and welcome back to this web series on System Center Operations Manager 2012 R2, covering installation and configuration. My name is Daniel Queen, and in part four, we're going to be installing our first management server and configuring the databases as well as installing the operations console. There really aren't any design considerations you need to deal with at this point, other than how many management servers do you need for your environment. You'll most certainly want more than one, at least two for high availability, but beyond that, that's all you need to do with at this stage. I'm going to walk you through installing our first management server. It's pretty straightforward. Um, there's not really a whole lot that we need to um, consider outside of just the basic installer. Part of that is actually configuring the databases. All the hard work we did with the firewall rules and the service accounts in the earlier videos will pay off here. If we've missed any, anything or messed anything up, you'll know about it when we get to entering the information about our databases. We're going to install the console prerequisites. This has changed a little bit in R2. There's an additional prerequisite and one of the prerequisites is the report viewer. You need the 2012 version now. And finally, we're going to actually install the operations console itself, which is very straightforward. So we're going to jump right on into it, and let's let's get on with it. Okay, let's jump right on in. I'm here on my first management server, xlscomms01.xlab.com. Let's go ahead and install our first management server. Got the CD already loaded. Now, when I was originally going through this process, I had originally intended to install the management server and the operations console in one swoop. In your case, you may not be installing operations consoles on actual management servers, but I'm going to do it in this case. Now, I was going to do them at the same time, but the prerequisites for the operations console have changed now in R2. Um, there's a couple... There's a different prerequisite than what we used to need, and there's an extra prerequisite now. So I'm going to come back and do this separate. So we're just going to do the first management server. So I'm going to just going to select that and click Next, Next. This is going to go through our prerequisite check. Um, I don't have the minimum amount of memory that it wants, but that's okay. This is a lab. Click Next. We're going to give it our first management group name. We're going to call it XLab. Next. I have read and understood. Now, here is where if you opened your correct ports, this will go smoothly. If you have not opened your correct ports, this will not be very fun for you. More often than not, if you don't have one of those correct RPC or the dynamic SQL ports opened up, you will actually get an error and you'll get a red X right here saying that it cannot find the version of SQL. Now, if you installed SQL on the same server as your management server, then that's all a moot point. Um, you won't, because Windows Firewall doesn't factor in if it's on the same server. So if you're doing an all-in-one installation, then a lot of what I did in the last section will not apply. So our SQL server was XLSQL01, port 1433, because I'm using the default instance. Now when I hit tab here, well, it did it for me. <laughs> if this all auto-fills, then you're golden. It's The ports are opened, and you're set. If not, you'll get an error here, and it's misleading because more often than not, it'll say that it can't, you don't have the right version. But when you look at your actual install log, you will see that it's actually not able to connect and read the OS version and the SQL version. So I'm going to name this Operations Manager my database name. You want to give it your initial size here of your database. This is a lab. I'm going to start with 1,000. You probably want to start with something quite a bit higher for production. The data file folder and log file folder, you can set these as you need. So I'm going to click Next. Your data warehouse. Nowadays, if you're just moving it from 2007, this is required. This is not an optional step anymore. It used to be you didn't have to have a data warehouse. You do now. So we install both of them on the same instance. So XLSQL01, and it reads everything just fine. Again, if you have any problems with a different database server, um, this is where it's going to come out. And so all that work with the ports earlier, that pays off right here. So I'm going to create a new data warehouse database. In the, in the event that you have a previous version 
of Operations Manager that you're upgrading from and you want to, well, not if you're really doing an upgrade, but if you're doing a side-by-side -side and you want to snap into your old data warehouse or data warehouse from a different management group, if you're creating a new management group, you can share data warehouses. And so here you could say use existing data warehouse. Start with your initial database size. 1,000 is way too low for this data warehouse. But again, this is just a lab. Nothing's really going on in here. So I'm going to just leave it at these defaults. Okay, so this is where we're going to use all of our domain accounts that we created earlier. So xlab slash svc underscore scom msa for the management server action account. Punch in the password. You could use local system for either of these, as I mentioned before. Um, but I'm going to use domains for all of them. The configuration service and data access service, we're going to use a domain account. As you would in most enterprise organizations. Uh, SVC underscore SCOM DAS, punch in the password, the data reader account, xlabs SVC underscore SCOM DATRD, xlab slash SVC underscore SCOM DATWRT. And when I hit next here, if any of these passwords are wrong, you'll get an error. Now, in fact, I will probably get an error on the data access service. Yep, right there. And that is because you need to have this service here, and it doesn't hurt to have the Management Server Action account also as a local administrator on your actual management service. This one is definitely required. This one, not so much to do the installation, but I'm going to go ahead and make both of these local administrators since this one is going to be performing actions on the server and this one it is required for SCOM to work. So, oops, not server manager. Local users and groups. Go to my groups, administrators, add a local administrator. This is going to be SVC underscore SCOM MSA and SVC underscore SCOM DAS. There we go. And you could just put these into a group and propagate these to all your management servers or just do them individually. I'm only going to need these on my actual management servers, however many we decide to build. So that's all I need for that. Now I can click next and just fine. I'm not going to do CEIP, the Customer Experience Improvement Program. It's up to you if you want to do it. It's probably not a bad idea considering it's a new product that actually helped Microsoft fix bugs, but I don't have internet connectivity anyways, so no. Error reporting, same reason, no. Microsoft Update, I don't really have update capabilities here, so off. On is recommended, of course. Summary and install, I'm going to be pausing throughout this because this is quite lengthy. So here we go. Now this is going to do the initial configuration. The first thing it's going to do is it's actually going to configure and um, build your operational database and your data warehouse database. It's going to create the tables, build all the security and all that kind of things. And it's actually going to install the management server as well, do some final configuration, and wrap it all up. So I'm going to pause until all of this is done. Okay, so we've finished installing everything. Uh, you're going to get a war well, you may not get a warning on management server. I am because this is an eval version. Uh, it says an evaluation version of operation management successfully installed to properly license it. Use the SETSCOM license commandlet. Uh, I don't intend on doing that when I'm done. So, okay, we've actually finished building a operations manager bare bones environment. Just to give you a quick uh, peek at this real quick, uh, I've hopped over here to my SQL Server XL SQL01, and you can see I have my operations manager database and my operations manager data warehouse database. So I just thought I would show you that real quick. Okay, so I'm back here on my management server, and I did say that we would install the operations console, but there are a few different prerequisites. So if we click install, I'm going to check my task manager real quick. I'm chewing up a lot more resources now that I've installed SCOM. 
I'm going to add a feature. I'm going to add the operations console. And normally when you used to do this, it would run the prerequisite check. And it is running quite a bit slower now. It would say report viewer controls check failed. We need the report viewer controls. What used to be, at least in 2012-2012 SP1, the 2010 report viewer controls would suffice. Now, however, those no longer cut it. You need to have the report viewer 2012 controls. However, the report viewer 2012 controls now have a prerequisite which is the SQL Server 2012 SP1, because that's my version of SQL I'm using, um, CLR types. If you go to, if you search for that, you'll find a download page and it gives you lots of different files you can download. You're just looking for the x64 or x86, but x64 uh, CLR types. Just look for that file. And so I'm going to copy that over as well. I'm going to run them locally. These don't take too terribly long to install. It, the new report viewer takes a fair amount longer than the old one, but it's still not too bad. Accept the terms. Install. Okay, I had paused it while it installed. It only took less than a minute, maybe. It says that I must restart my system. I'm just going to restart later. We're going to now install the Report Viewer 2012 controls. Okay, click Next. Accept the terms. Next. Install. Okay, that's done. So we can verify our prerequisites again on SCUM. And it does say a restart is pending, probably from the CLR types. I had actually installed this once before when I was testing something and uninstalled it. That's probably why it needs this because it didn't ask for this the first time. So I'm going to pause the recording real quick and go ahead and restart. Okay, I've gone ahead and restarted and rerun the prerequisite checker. And you can see we're just getting this warning from memory. So let's go ahead and click Next. Uh, same thing here. I'm going to opt out of CEIP, I'm going to opt out of error reporting, I'm going to opt out of update, and we're going to go ahead and click install, and I'm going to pause this while it installs. Okay, that didn't take very long, maybe a minute or so. So, setup is complete, I do not want to launch update, we're going to start the operations console when the wizard closes. So let's go ahead and launch the console and see what it looks like. Now I'll do a whole different video probably after this series actually diving into the inner workings of the console. But for now you can see that it is working. We have our administration tab working, our authoring, and our monitoring. We don't have reporting yet because we haven't installed reporting yet, but we'll get there. Um, Okay, and here's our active alerts pane, which we are all clear. Um, in an earlier test, I actually had a critical error message here where uh, the service principal name did not register correctly. If that happens, it gives you the instructions on how to do it yourself. Um, it seems to be a toss-up sometimes, depending on your environment, whether or not you're going to get that error or not. Most accounts, by default, don't have rights to update their own service principal names. So if that's the case, then... You just have to do it yourself, but it's it's very easy and it even gives you instructions and the alert details. So, okay, we have our console installed. We have our first management server installed. We have our databases installed and configured, and we really have an up and running environment with the exception of actually having you know agents installed in our environment. And you can see over here, we click on management servers. And there is our management server, and it is our first one, so it is the RMS, the Root Management Server Emulator. That's for backwards compatibility for legacy management packs if you are not familiar with um, Operation Under 2007. 
So, okay, we're going to go ahead and stop this part here. And in the next section, we will get into installing a gateway server. And for that part, we're going to use a secondary domain with no trust. And we're also going to be using an enterprise cert certificate authority built in this domain, the xlab.com domain. And we are going to be deploying SSL certificates and installing and configuring a gateway server. So I'm going to take you through that step by step. I'm actually going to probably, and not even in this series, maybe in a later series, we'll do more of a deep dive on using the operations console and the different features of it and a few little tricks uh, for getting the best usage out of it. So we'll deal with that probably in, not even in this series, in a later video. So I think that's all for now. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.